highs and lows, good times and bad times, sickness and health, better and worse. Now for some of us, these phrases might bring to mind traditional wedding vows. And some of those phrases and realities, well, they're in there. But that's not why I share them with you today. You see, as we're reading through Isaiah today in chapter 38 and 39, that's kind of what we see in these two chapters. We see a description of some really good and bad things, sickness and health, what seems to be a high point in King Hezekiah's life and a very low point. You see, in chapter 38, the prophet Isaiah brings a difficult message from God to Hezekiah. Listen to how brunt it is in verse one. Set your affairs in order, for you're going to die. You will not recover from this illness. In this moment, Hezekiah does what seems like a good thing. In a time of sickness, he prays. And he prays earnestly. He pleads with the Lord for his life, but he also gives what seems to be a very heartfelt reflection of his devotion to God. And what happens? Well, God extends his life by 15 years. It's a powerful story. Well, then in chapter 39, soon after this, how soon? We don't know. Verse one just says, soon after this. We're told that Babylonian ambassadors, in what seems like a gesture of kindness, come to bring best wishes and a gift to Hezekiah because of his sickness. So this junior superpower at the time, Babylon, shows up on the shores of Judah, which is kind of a lowly nation with little power, with gifts. And what does Hezekiah do? Well, we're told that in his pride, he shows them all the treasures of the kingdom. And the prophet Isaiah, he confronts them with the prophecy of consequence for this, that one day Babylon would carry off those treasures even with some of his own descendants. And the chapter ends with Hezekiah. Well, let me read it to you. It's kind of odd in verse eight. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, this message you have given me from the Lord is good. For the king was thinking, at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. This is a low point for Hezekiah. He doesn't get it right here in chapter 39. And unfortunately, this is all too true for all of us. In all of our lives and walks with the Lord, we don't bat a thousand. Hezekiah sure didn't hear. In chapter 38, he's responding in prayer, seems humble. God answers in a very powerful way. And then in chapter 39, he's arrogant. And when he's corrected, he, well, he doesn't really seem to care. I think a few of the life lessons we can glean from Hezekiah's life, well, a reminder of the importance of humility selflessness, and keeping an eternal perspective, even in the midst of some blessing. See, Hezekiah's life is a reminder to make it our aim and our prayer to cultivate humility and to keep an eternal perspective in every season of our lives.